a lot of MMOs, and yes, even if Bungie wants to make up other names, Destiny is an MMO as much as anything else, have come up with different ways of making sure that players have something to do. Some games do it better than others. Some games solve the problem by creating a lot of different content, while others use RNG to force replaying to create the illusion of content and increase the perception of longevity. Destiny being the first game of this type for a company new to the genre, a lot of heavily active PvE players have had plenty of times where they sat there with a controller in hand wondering what to do now. We want to play Destiny. It's fun, but we didn't really have a clearly defined route to actually better our Guardians, to have something that we didn't have before. More importantly, when we went and did whatever we wanted, whatever our favorite activity was, or whatever we were in the mood for, we would often find ourselves doing an activity with comparably no rewards. Destiny is built in such a way that, outside of group activities, themselves limited by weekly resets, queuing for strikes is pretty much it. Since we're in a very different world than year one, I won't talk about it too much, but I will talk about things both before and after this last March's update. It did improve things a bit, but it's sad it took until the very last update to the game in order for us to be where we're at, and it's still not very rewarding. What's been revealed so far about Destiny 2 seems to imply things will be a lot better, but that's another game, and this is the Destiny postmortem. I'll evaluate Destiny 2 when it launches and have had a few weeks to get a feel. Before diving in, I should reiterate, I'm a PvE guy, and this is a PvE-focused series. I'm without the authority to speak on PvP matters, and just about every other content creator and streamer are playing and talking about PvP all the time. If you want that perspective, browsing almost anything else Destiny will get you to someone who will gladly tell you their thoughts on the state of PvP. Let's set aside two things. The first is XP. You get 5 motes of light every time you would level after hitting level 40. Grinding levels for motes isn't going to get you anything faster than just about anything else. The second is legendary marks. There are a few of the activities that cough up legendary marks as rewards. Instead of evaluating the worth of marks each time, I'll just share once. Only now are they really worth anything. Starting with year two, they were really only worth something when you were first leveling and the vendor gear was a higher light than what you had. However, most people rushing would be at a point where they would have lost that purpose after week 2. The second time they were actually worth anything was during a vendor item reset, and that used to be only twice a year. The need for them to infuse is usually more than countered by the rate at which you acquired junk legendaries anyway, so that's also unimportant. Only with this recent March update and the new weekly reset of all vendors do legendary marks actually have meaning anymore. No longer am I noticing I'm yet again at max just to run and turn them all into upgrade materials to then, in turn, dump them into my faction rep. Now it's possible that I may want hundreds more in a week. They saved themselves with this one, and I'm sure we're all happier for it. It gave a lot more people a reason to at least turn the game on each week. Now, let's break down the PvE activities you have available to you. 1. Replaying story missions. 2. Replaying story missions at heroic difficulty. 3. Daily heroic missions and weekly heroic missions. 4. Patrols, including public events. 5. The Court of Oryx. 6. Archon's Forge. 7. Non-PVP Gunsmith Testing. 8. Bounties. 9. Classic Strikes. 10. Level 36 Strikes. 11. Level 42 Strikes. 12. Heroic Level 42 Strikes. 13. The Nightfall. 
14. The Prison of Elders. 15. The Raid. 1. Replaying Story Missions. There is no value here. If your desire is to experience the story in the game, you get to do so knowing that you'll get a tiny fraction of the experience needed to level before you end, and maybe an engram or two, neither at an increased rate. You don't receive anything on the right side of your screen upon mission conclusion, nor later in the reward screen. There should be something here. I'm not going to suggest something for each emptiness, as there are many solutions and they should be balanced against each other in a finalized package, but I feel there should be something here, even if it has the weakest returns on time. 2. Replaying story missions at heroic difficulty. There is no value here. I'd love for them to be balanced to be difficult for a highlight character, to be endgame material, even if they were the bottom of the ladder when it came to rewards for the difficult stuff. Still, something. And there's room here to activate these in such a way where it's new each time, including a randomized modifier set. 3. The daily and weekly heroic mission sets. These aren't too different from each other, both in function and reward, so we'll look at them together. As is, they're okay, though it'd be nice to have a weapon or gear roll at the end of the completion of the weekly. The marks are nice, though only now. I do believe there should be free ways of getting the boxes, but placating an activity only once per week doesn't make it fun for those who do it only for the box, so I don't feel this is the proper way to grant them. If the previous activity was rebalanced in the way I suggested, this activity may actually become redundant. 4. Patrols, including public events. Patrols are currently in a weird spot. They're slightly dynamic, largely doable at your own pace, don't have fail states, and are actually a great way to farm for both Vanguard and Faction Rep especially if you're in a full fire team and at the Cosmodrome, Venus, or Mars. The problem is longevity. Though the kinds of beacon mini-missions increases with each expansion, they still don't feel varied enough. Additionally, that rep is really all you're getting out of them, and I feel this needs attention. Public events are definitely better now, but even then, it's not like you're farming some material unique to them or had a chance of garnering some amazing gear from them unless you luck sack with the engram from your first daily gold. They feel like they could be made into something larger, where you're tracking them down in order to complete a quest with a worthwhile reward at the end, though they do lose any sense of spontaneity if they aren't actually random, and you can track them with, say, a website. Currently, they really aren't worth your time. It's important to note that going into a patrol, where you can explore the world, and expecting something new when you're on day 700 of a game's life cycle, isn't very realistic. However, that doesn't alleviate the feeling that this rich world should have more. Is time getting the answer? I feel it could be, in addition to whatever else is going on in Destiny 2. For example, what if, next week, there's finally something that happens when you clear out the thralls in that cave in the grottos. Or if some unique boss spawns the next time you decide to explore the endless steps. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a reason at all to explore the Hellmouth besides just dipping your toe in for a quick VIP kill? 5. Court of Oryx There is almost no value here. The rep gained from Eris turns into pretty much nothing important to an endgame guardian, as she doesn't have weapons or a gear set, and it's not like she's the only source of class items. Although the relic chance from tier 2 and 3 is good for someone not at 400 light already, we're evaluating from an endgame guardian's viewpoint. Through that lens, there's really no reason to do this activity and that makes it all the more frustrating for someone that needs it to hope to have a geared helper chance into their instance. 6. Archon's Forge. There is almost no value here. This one took a few of the things that made Court of Warwick's nice and worsened them. 
the limit of one activating item, the inability to rejoin without a separate item alongside a timeout that makes death mean failure if alone, and more horrible instanced matchmaking. If you get through all that, its rewards are mostly cosmetic. The drop rate is so frustratingly low and weighted towards class items that the only unique weapons, the fusion rifle and sniper rifle, are not even realistic to hope for with a full fire team and an entire afternoon to kill. It doesn't help that one of them is almost universally hated. 7. Non-PVP Gunsmith Testing There is no worth here. The weapon testing was a neat idea, but it's largely unrealized. The guns you can get are the same that you get from the packages, so spending time doing the very limited rep farming you can do each week isn't as simple as waiting for the right rolls to show up. In my opinion, the gunsmith has the opportunity to be great, and that's without even reintroducing rerolls. It isn't a rewarding activity. 8. Bounties Bounties have been, throughout the game's life cycle, essentially patrol beacons that you can take with you and stack, and this places them in a weird spot as well. They usually take longer, and their rewards are also larger. However, like the gunsmith, they are limited in quantity. The addition of the strike bounties, Zavala's bounties, and Petra's bounties were a welcome band-aid, though. The problem with trying to specifically go after bounties is that it's much more efficient to just go do something else at the same time and let them complete as they do. 9. Classic Strikes There is no worth here unless you're hunting strike-specific shaders. Now, the fact that the shaders are tied to only this playlist is a problem in the first place. I see nothing in the Age of Triumph patch notes about them fixing that. However, this is the one activity that I think is fine without rewards. This playlist exists specifically so players at mid-level have strikes to do. Being that other playlists exist for endgame, we can leave this one alone. Just fix the damn shader drops. 10. Level 36 Strikes There is no value here, and they really don't need to exist. I can really only see a flavor reason that you want a player to be done with the Taken King story missions before doing some of the strikes. But if the rewards are going to be the same, and they might as well be, then I really don't see the harm in condensing this and the Classic Strikes playlist at level 20. Strikes aren't a part of the main storyline anyway. Maybe just rename the result. 11. Level 42 Strikes There is little value here only present if you're trying to speed farm for keys. This stepping stone in the leveling structure doesn't really need to exist. What's the harm in removing this playlist and just dropping down the heroic to 320 light? With how item drop light levels are tied to the player's light level already, I don't see any balance issues. It would fix this being largely neglected, and all you'd really need to do is remove the word heroic on all the bounties and quests. Yes, I'm advocating ultimately only two strike playlists. 12. Heroic Level 42 Strikes This is pretty much the default endgame activity for the solo PvE player. Only when the rest of the activities are reworked should this one get looked at. There's still just about no chance of getting an exotic, but the legendary strike exclusive loot and the current key system isn't bad. I'd be fine with random legendaries and exotics being spread among other activities, as the return on time investment for Heroic Strikes is about as good as it gets. 13. The Nightfall There isn't much of a worth here. We all know the drops suck, have for a while, and we're all wondering why. You can only take so many Nightfalls that end in coins, moats, and horn kits before you just abandon the headache. I've only bothered with them in the last year and a half because soloing them is decent streaming material. This being the only activity in the game that drops actual decrypted exotics is noted, but they are too rare and likely not what you're looking for. Honestly, making it a random legendary weapon and legendary armor, both guaranteed, would be simple enough to make them worth the effort again, but there would need to be a good balance check against everything else. 14. 
The Prison of Elders. There isn't any worth here once you have all the exotics, and that's if you want them. I'm actually happy with their drop rate, so there's that. The only worth I see is the long-term farm value, but that's only if you're trying to complete an armor set or look for a specific weapon. With how fast you level, even with rep roosters and bounties, it would take a very long time to get a specific weapon with perks that you want. Having unique gear, and lots of it, is great for arguing the worth of an activity, but they aren't going to be better than the other drops, so why the separate effort? 15. Raids Well, when evaluating the worth for the solo player, I'm not going to make an argument that this is something to talk about. However, when it comes to the drops, once you do find your way into a group, there are already numerous videos on how raids can be done better. I do think the wish to AO was a step in the right direction, but we're not there yet. Being the only source for a certain loot, but that loot only being exceptional back inside the same activity, is a game design practice that has logical pitfalls. How to do Destiny raids right would best be done in a video in another series. That's all the PvE activity broken down individually. Too many of them just aren't rewarding. If the game structure were changed where you gathered all those activities and made a system where you could do any of them, exclusively or in whatever combination, and rewarded you more for the time spent than by activity completion, that'd solve a number of problems at once, but it would create other problems and alienate the players only playing a little each week. It'd also have to be done in a measurable way, and in a way that couldn't be exploited. But that's what planning and testing is for. Gotta make game designers work hard for their pay, after all. To conclude, I feel that logging in and doing my favorite activity should be rewarding no matter what it is. That's doable in Destiny. The fact that it requires some brainstorming and planning with maybe a few patches of iteration doesn't mean it shouldn't be tackled. If we determine that the end game of Destiny 2 is like this at launch, let's work together to solve this problem in a similar fashion. In the last video in this series, we'll take a look at a bunch of points that I feel needed a mention without having enough material for a full episode on their own. Thank you for listening. This is Rilo with my Destiny Postmortem.